Hi, this is Shannon, the owner of Strategic Intervention Solutions. Many of you know us as SIS, the number four teachers. I wanted to pop on to do a quick video while you're working with your child at home in math. Sometimes it's confusing as to why students today are not learning math the way you and I learned it. We all turned out okay learning that traditional way and just saying carry the one and borrowing. I just want to kind of give you a quick couple tips as you are going through with your child. Talking about why number sense is so important. We're not trying to teach children math in a crazy way. We're actually helping promote place value and understanding. When you and I grew up, it was really all about how. Just tell me the procedure, tell me how you do it. You're writing it down just the way that your teacher has told you and then you're kind of regurgitating and giving it back. In today's math with ACT, SAT, college prep, all of these different types of things for even the way the world works in the 21st century, we have Siri. I can go on my phone right now and ask what 25 times 26 is and she'll tell me. We don't want your children to be able to just regurgitate numbers. They have to be able to have the application and the place value understanding to apply it later in algebra. Did you know that less than 8% of our kids in the United States, United States qualify for advanced algebra? That's kind of scary, right? It's not that math is hard. I just think they didn't understand it when they were learning it within whole numbers. And so what we wanted to do today is kind of feature a video from one of our friends from our math mites. He's the guy right there, T-Pops, one of our favorite guys. He is the oldest math citizen in Mathville because he likes to do the traditional method. And yeah, I may have made this character a certain way to kind of represent that we're a little bit old and do our, our skills a certain way. It's not whether or not you agree with this way or don't. Your kids have great number sense to solve with T-Pops. We want them to be using the appropriate language as they're doing it. So T-Pops is kind of balding. He's got bunny slippers and he carries a cane as he's walking. I'm going to demonstrate in this video. All I want you to listen to is the language I'm using. Am I carrying a one? Well, no, it's not a one. In the video I might be showing, it might be a hundred or a 10. Um, and so we want you to check out our T-Pops video just as food for thought as you're working with your child at home. I've had lots of people send me messages saying, look what I saw on Facebook. Someone said that their new homeschool teacher is gonna teach them to carry the one. <laughs> well, I mean, you can do that, but just be thinking about, you might be undoing some of your child's thinking. And it's not that you don't know how to teach your child math, you do. It's really more about their understanding of it and being able to tell you the why before the how. Yeah, there's all kinds of shortcuts in math, but if you just memorize procedures with concepts you don't understand, what is the depth of knowledge as you have to apply it? Kids today in the 21st century, it's much less about the regurgitation. Look at a state test example. It doesn't say what's 25 times 35, A, B, C, or D. It says somebody solved this through the area model and partial products. Where's their area? Where's their error? If a child just knows that procedure, they're not going to do well. And so this is kind of hard for a lot of us as we are not maybe not teachers and you didn't sign up to be a homeschool teacher over these next few weeks. So here at SIS, along with our friends of Making Math Make Sense, we're here for you and want to help you. So we hope that you check out our T-Pops traditional method and just listen to the way I'm talking and that I think your child will be able to relate to that as many of our teachers have our students attend to place value. Be sure to check out all of our resources on our website at sis4teachers.org. Thanks so much. Hi, this is Shannon from SIS for Teachers. Today we're going to show you how to solve addition problems with regrouping using T-Pops. We're going to use our T-Pops place value mat and kind of talk about this strategy within our Math Might series. T-Pops is the oldest citizen in Mathville. He has a cane and he has kind of balding hair and wears bunny slippers. Although he loves through the traditional method, now that he's met his other friends, such as DC, Abracus, as well as the value pack, he knows that you should learn their strategies before you learn his. I like to do this strategy a lot as well with maybe getting kids familiar with the concrete tools of using the place value discs first with just numbers that are not regrouping. In this case though, we have a problem that we're going to solve 257 plus 135 using T-Pops. 
So TPOPS is going to kind of watch us as we are going through this process and we're going to build with our place value disks. If you don't have place value disks in your classroom, we sell them on our website on sisforteachers.org. You can also watch some of our tutorial videos on our YouTube channel to tell you how to get organized for your mass salad bar so students can use these materials with ease. We're going to use these non-proportional manipulatives to build our first add-in. The first add-in is going to go on the grid. The second add-in is going to go at the bottom. When we're looking at non-proportional manipulatives, students don't need to write what the column represents. So someone might think of writing ones, tens, and then hundreds. This isn't necessary because when we look at this, this looks like 200 hundreds, and that's not really what it is. It's two one hundreds. Because non-proportional non manipulatives have it right on there, you don't necessarily need to have it to the top. However, when we made this map, we know that some students, as they're getting acclimated to whether it's whole numbers or even decimals, they might need to label temporarily. T-Pops thinks that's okay. So we're gonna go ahead and build 257. We would like for students to fill the 10 frames just as they've learned 10 frames in the past, kind of filling them nice and equally versus kind of filling them in sort of a, a scattered arrangement. Making them organized will help them when they're adding as they make a new 10 or a new decade number as they're adding. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my 200, 50, and then seven. At the bottom of the mat, I'm gonna go ahead and add my 135. That's what I'm adding to it. So I'm gonna put my 100 down at the bottom, my three tens, and then I'm going to put my five ones. The reason why we have this at the bottom of the mat is because students get excited about this and start to combine, and they don't necessarily look at what's happening in the algorithm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start looking at adding seven plus five. I already have my seven, so I'm gonna add in my five. Wanting kids to stop here to see what they've had for a minute, to talk about what they're doing. They're not carrying, they're just renaming numbers as we're looking at it in the addition. So if I have seven plus 12, I'm sorry, seven plus five, I know that it's 12. This doesn't all fit in this column, so another name for 12 might be, instead of 12 ones, it would be 110 and two ones. So in that case, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my 10 ones and I'm going to exchange it for a 10. I didn't really carry anything. You know, they always put it to the top. T-Pops likes to do a bottom regroup where he says that he made this 110 because I'm not bringing this 10 on top. I'm really just placing it over in the tens column like I'm doing here. And I know that I'm left now with these two ones. So I have 110 and two ones, which totals 12. If you're used to doing the top regroup, no problem. You don't have to do the bottom regroup, but it kind of helps kids to sort of see what's happening. Now, when we go to add this together, we know that we have our five tens. I'm gonna put in the three tens here that we're adding, and I can already see that one 10 here that I added. So by adding 50 plus 30 plus 10, I know that my total here is 90 or nine tens. I'm gonna add my 100 to the 200 I already have, and I can really nicely see that I have a total of 392. This is showing the concrete way along with the abstract. You certainly want to teach through CPA by also looking at this in a pictorial way where students might have a shorthand way that they're going about showing what's happening when they're adding with regrouping. We hope that you can use this video in your classroom as a launch to help kids start to understand how to use the place value disks to do addition with regrouping. You can certainly make these numbers higher or lower. We're gonna show you in other tutorial videos how to do this with decimals, using the decimal tiles the same way. If students learn this way in one grade and then kind of transfer it to the next, doing it with higher, higher numbers or even with the decimals, it really helps to solidify their understanding for math. We hope that you enjoyed our video and will check us out on sis4teachers.org.